Cole and Jay here. We are out in our flower bed. Yes, we are. I've got my awesome sun hat on, even though the sun is not <laughs> shining today. Thumbs down for that, but thumbs up to the nice weather that the shade of these clouds is providing on us right now in this flower bed. It's usually super hot when we're out here. <laughs> and also, before we say anything else, we just want to say we love you, and we hope that you are having a great and fantastic day today. Now, without further ado, let's get to why Jay and I are hanging out here in the flower bed. So, all summer, we have been growing all these flowers. They're for attracting insect pollinators. We love insects, we love butterflies, and we want to provide a nice landing spot for them so they can stop and enjoy and drink up the nectar in the flowers. And we also have planted several host plants to many butterfly species. Number one in particular is milkweed for the monarch butterfly. I'm not sure if you know this or not, but the monarch butterfly is a species of special concern. Over the last 20 years, I, I believe that the population, the total population of all monarchs in the world has declined by 90% due to pesticides and fragmentation and a bunch of other variables. But we like to try to help them out along the way by planting milkweed in our flower beds, something we've done ever since we were little. I grew up planting milkweed in my flower beds. So now that we have our own house, we have decided to plant milkweed. And, uh, it's been it's been grown all year and it's kind of got to the point where it's about it's about done and we've raised a bunch of butterflies but before it's all done for the rest of the year we want to take a moment so we can show you how we get these monarch butterfly caterpillars and bring them inside and raise them into adults and now we're going to take a walk over to the milkweed plant and we're going to show you all these really awesome caterpillars and we're going to show you how we collect them off the plant bring them inside and we're going to show you the life cycle of the monarch butterfly Get ready, it's awesome. Oh my goodness, oh my goodness. Look at all these pillows. Y'all see them yet? Because I sure do. These <laughs> suckers are humongous. Usually we don't let them stay out here this long, but these just kind of popped out of nowhere. We just got in raising like 15 uh, caterpillars to adults and we're just coming out here to check and get a couple more. And there's all these giant monarch caterpillars out here. Giants. <laughs> yeah. So Jay's gonna cut off a couple of stems with these caterpillars on there, and then we'll hand remove some individual caterpillars. Got three on this one. Got three on this one. We're just gonna set them in this little bucket for the time being. And uh, some of these that are on individual stalks, we're just gonna pick them, pick off, them off and then set them in the bucket. And then we'll get them all situated when we get back in the house. Got him? Got him. All right, just set him in there. As soon as you touch them, they usually curl up into a little ball. They, it's a little defense mechanism that they have. He wasn't too scared. We've got our caterpillars and we're going to take them inside. I think we have 13 or 14 big ones and there's a couple of little ones that have snuck their way onto here. And there's a couple of really bitty babies on here. I see like five little tiny ones to go along with the 14 big ones. So we could have up to 20 caterpillars on this plant. We're going to take them inside and we're going to show you how we set them up. Let's go. We're back in the house and this container right here is the enclosure which we will be raising these monarch caterpillars. And as you can maybe see from this distance, we already have nine chrysalises in there and they will be emerging within the next week or so. So we're just going to add these guys right into the enclosure where they can continue out their life cycle. Um, to do this, um, the best way is to bring in fresh milkweed and to keep it fresh, you're going to want to put it in a cup of water. But to prevent the caterpillars from falling into the cup of water and drowning, which would be terrible, you're going to cover it up with just some plastic wrap. I just ripped this off the spool. I'm going to put it on the top. And then I'm just going to secure it shut with this ponytail holder. You can use a rubber band or whatever you need to use to secure it shut. Ponytail holders are great though. Okay. That sucker is shut. And now all we're going to do is we're going to have to manipulate the caterpillars a little bit so that we don't shove them down in the water. Like these guys down here on the bottom of the stem, we're going to take these guys off and replace them. But all we're going to do is we're just going to shove this plant down through the saran wrap. Just make a small hole. And you can actually stab every stem of the stalk of the plant into that same hole. And it'll keep fresh for a long time. <laughs> Usually the caterpillars eat it all before it even gets to a point where it's ready to wilt. So that's a good thing, I guess. We're just gonna put all this in here. We've been doing this all summer. We have not lost a single caterpillar in the water yet all year. So I'd say that it is a very effective way to keep your milkweed alive and keep your caterpillars happy. Welcome to your new home, little homies. 
We've actually got all sorts of things uh, going on in here. We have some Sphinx Moth uh, caterpillars that I pupated in the ground in this little tub of dirt here. So I'm trying to keep it just as is. There's one that pupated underneath a previous cup. So I'm gonna put the cup back on top of him so it'll feel secure. But there it is. There are all of your caterpillars, their milkweed, their water source, and you can see all of the chrysalises in there that are undergoing metamorphosis as we speak. It's so crazy to think about the life cycle of a butterfly. This is something very easy that you can do at your home. You can get involved with your children. Just go outside, um, find some milkweed. You can find caterpillars on the milkweed and bring them in and do this yourself. It's a whole lot of fun and it's a great way to learn about these insects right inside your home. Monarch butterflies are easily one of the country's most beautiful and easily distinguished butterfly species. Their brilliant orange color and wing patterns can easily be spotted fluttering around in wild and planted flower gardens. Like all butterflies and moths, they have a very unique lifestyle where they undergo metamorphosis in four distinct stages, transforming from egg to caterpillar to chrysalis to finally an adult butterfly. The process is mind-blowing and a true testament to how astounding the natural world around us really is. At this point, we are going to show you the transformation process from egg to adult. After mating, adult monarch butterflies seek out their host plant, milkweed, and lay small individual white eggs on the plant. There are many varieties of milkweed. Some of their favorites are swamp, common, non-native tropical milkweed, and butterfly weed. The small caterpillars that hatch from the eggs begin feeding heavily on the milkweed plant that they are on. They eat so much of it and grow very rapidly. They shed their skin as they grow, and the period between each skin shedding event is called an instar. Monarch caterpillars have five instar periods total. Monarch butterfly larvae and adults are very brightly colored. These bright colors are warning colors known as aposematic coloration. The bright colors are adaptations that signal to potential predators that they are not desirable prey. Monarchs contain toxins they derive from the milkweed plant. Animals that eat a monarch will find them very ill-tasting and can get sick from them, which in the end results in them avoiding the caterpillars and butterflies the next time they are seeking out a meal. Aposematic coloration is a really unique defensive strategy found throughout nature across many species of animals. In the wild, when caterpillars are ready to pupate, they will often travel away from the plant to a new structure to create their chrysalis. Before they pupate, the caterpillar will spin up a silk mat to anchor itself and hang upside down in a J shape and as it sheds its skin for the last time, it will stab a stem into the silk mat to hang from. This stem is called the cremaster, and it is very sturdy to support the chrysalis. At this point, we would like to take a second now to say that it would be incorrect to call a butterfly pupa a cocoon. Many moth caterpillars spin a silken cocoon to, pr to protect them as a pupa. Butterflies do not do this, so that is why we refer to their pupa differently as a chrysalis. Now, just before the adult monarch butterfly emerges from its chrysalis, you can see all of the black, orange, and white wing patterns on the butterfly. This is not because the chrysalis is transparent, but because the pigmentation on the scales of the wings only becomes visible at the end of the pupa stage. As an adult, the primary job is to reproduce and lay as many eggs as possible that will become the next generation. There are actually four generations of monarchs each year. Females begin laying eggs immediately after their first mating, and both sexes can mate several times throughout their lives. Adults in summer generations can live anywhere from two to five weeks. Adults that emerge in late summer and early fall have a completely different job. This generation of monarchs migrate to overwintering grounds in central Mexico for eastern monarchs or in southern California for western monarchs. In these locations, they spend their winters clustered together by the thousands in trees until weather conditions permit them to migrate back to their breeding grounds. Adults in this stage can live up to nine months. Monarchs are the only insect in the world that migrate to a warmer climate 2,500 miles away each year. It is hard to imagine that a butterfly that is so frequently seen could be at risk for extinction. The reality is that the monarch population, based on a study looking at the total area occupied by overwintering monarch colonies in sites in Mexico, has shown a dramatic downward trend in the overall population. Monarch populations have declined 90% since the population high recorded 20 years ago. The decline in population is attributed to the degradation of their Mexican mountain forest habitat, the rapid loss of their milkweed habitat in their spring and summer homes, the increased use of pesticides and other toxic chemicals, and the impacts from climate change. We can all get involved to help reverse the monarch butterfly decline, and there are several ways in doing so. The number one way we believe you can help monarchs is to plant native milkweed. 
Milkweed is the only host plant and the sole food source for monarch caterpillars. Without milkweed, monarchs cannot complete their life cycle. Also, along with planting milkweed, you might as well go on ahead and create a wildlife habitat garden planted with beautiful native plants to offer food, water, and cover for monarchs to utilize. Another way we can help monarchs is to not use pesticides. Insecticides kill butterflies and caterpillars, while herbicides kill the plants and flowers they need to survive. Every little bit helps, and you can make a difference in the lives of these monarch butterflies. What's up, what's up, my friends? Today is a big day because we had a bunch of monarchs emerge. I have one on my finger, as you can clearly see right here. We have a couple more inside that are pumping their wings up, but this guy was fluttering around and ready to go. So we have brought him, might be a him, might be a her, I'm not sure, I'll have to see it open its wings up. We brought it outside and I'm going to place it on one of these zinnias, unless it just flies away. Either way is good, I'm just gonna set it on one of my zinnia plants. Let's put it on this nice red one right here. Okay, bud, there you go. Look at you, you got yourself your own flower. If that flower chooses, if that butterfly chooses so, it can drink some nectar from that plant or it can just hang out and fly away just whenever it wants to. Just hopefully it doesn't lay any more eggs on my milkweed because there is not enough leaves on the plant to sustain a bunch of caterpillars. We have some butterflies in here that are ready to go. It's been fun raising these guys to adults, but it is time for them to be free. Let's take them outside. Gee, you got a butterfly in your nose. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta get butterfly kisses. Before he leaves? Mm -hmm. He's saying thank you for taking care of me and not letting me get eaten by <laughs> a wasp or a fly or even crazy. You're tickling my nose. <laughs> Is it the wind's blowing and about to take off? Okay. Go on. There he is. <laughs> 